Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and welcome to another video about TypeScript. So, so far we've covered sort of like, you know, installing TypeScript and the benefits of TypeScript with typing. But typing changes kind of how you do everything, whether it's functions or classes. So we're going to be kind of going through the differences uh, along the way. Do you have to do them differently? No, you could do them in your old JavaScript way, but then you're not really using the benefits of, of TypeScript in it catching your errors, um, etc. So let's talk about functions. So your standard way of defining a function in JavaScript, um, well, I generally use arrow functions, so that's what we're going to do. So const my func equals, then you would put in your parameters, so no parameters, equals uh, caret, so that way we have an arrow, thus arrow function. Okay, and we're going to say return five plus five okay so there's our function well actually let me put a console log let's console.log so we're going to show it on the console i want to invoke my function so i've just defined my function i need to actually use it so i'm going to say that's my func but if i just leave it like that nothing happens i'm just console logging the description of my function because it's just treating it as a variable at that point if i want to invoke the function that is stored in the variable I actually have to put in the parentheses. So even though this function takes no parameters, it doesn't know that I'm looking to invoke or use the function unless it sees the parentheses. So keep that in mind. Always a source of frustration um, I've seen with some developers. Okay. Um, so in that case, that'll run and console log the result. It's going to return 5 plus 5, which should be 10. So if all goes well, that's going to return 10. So. Let's do, again, it's ts-node, practice, dot ts, oh, wait, I'm not in the right folder. This is why I'm only in the exercises folder, so I need to go to cd types, type, script. Say exercises. Oh, I see. Let me go down a couple different folders. CD coding crack CD TypeScript. Okie dokie. Now I can do TS node practice.ts. Okay, so it's running it. And again, it should just give me back the result of 10 because the, all the function does is add 5 and 5 statically. So when we get 10. Now here's the thing, it doesn't matter what I return, this function is going to work because there's no typing. So I'm not taking advantage of TypeScript at all. So there's no errors for it to check. It doesn't know what I'm expecting to happen. But what if I was expecting that this is going to return a string? What if that's what I wanted? So I could. So basically what you do is outside the parameter, not in the parameter list, but right outside the parameter list, you would say, hey, I want this to be a string. So I, this is telling it what I want the return value to be. So if you've ever done any Kotlin or Swift, they have a very similar typing syntax. So it would probably, this is probably very familiar. It's just sort of the, a lot of the newer languages do this kind of typing syntax. Um, okay. So now if I run that, it's gonna complain that it's returning in a number but you but number cannot be assigned to a string a string because it's expecting a string. So see type number is not assignable to type string. Okay. So I'd catch that error. So if I wanted to create a function that was I intentionally wanted to return a string, I can see that I'm doing something wrong because I've I've assigned that type. Now let's say I wanted to add two numbers. Okay. So we're gonna adjust this a little bit. So we're gonna add a and b. But I need to get a and b. And we need to make sure that this is returning a number. We're going to keep erroring. So we want to return a number. So I need two parameters. So we're going to say, hey, I want to take an, a parameter named A. That's a number. And a parameter named B. That's a number. OK, so here I go. I have, I've not, not only typed my return value, but I've also I've typed my parameters. Very cool. OK, so now I need to actually put parameters in my function. 5 dash 5. So I'm saying, hey, add 5 and 5 together, because that's what my function does, returns the sum of two numbers, 
So let's run that code again. This should run fine because both my parameters are numbers as I type them. So it should just give me back 10. And then it gives me back 10. But what if I did this? What if instead of doing 5 and 5, I did 5 and 5, but the second 5 was a string? Okay, in normal JavaScript, it would just concatenate those numbers, and I'd end up with 5, 5, because it would just turn the other 5 into a string, and do 5 plus the string of 5, and I'd end up with 5, 5. But that's not what I wanted. So let's see what... I really wanted to add two numbers. So let's see how TypeScript responds. It's going to be like, okay, I'm taking in the parameters, and wait a second, your second parameter, the 5, is a string, and it's not assignable to type number. Okay, so I catch that. Okay, so again, we're just seeing sort of the benefits of this. Okay, now, let's go let's take it a little bit deeper. What if I did this? Let's, let, me, let me wrap this up in a object. So now what this is saying is that it need the parameter has to be an object, so I have to pass it an object. If I don't pass it an object, it's going to error. And that object has to have at least two parameters that are numbers. That's essentially what this is saying here. So if those things aren't true, it's going to fail when I try to use this error or when I try to use this function. So let's create an object. Does it have to be two properties? As I understand it, it only needs to be at least two properties of, this, of the correct types. So let's create an object and see how, the, how it treats it. My object equals, okay, and wait, it's going to throw me an error already. I need to declare my function. See, it, it forces good practices. Const my object. I'm going to say first is one, second is three, two, and third is hello. So it has two number properties and a string property. Nice. Okay, so let me just put a semicolon there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in that object as my parameter. So I am passing in an object as a parameter, and that object does have at least two numbers as, 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 as properties. So let's see how TypeScript responds. So T is no practice. And there's an error. Let's see here, my object. First number, second number, third string is missing the following property types. A, B, N, E, A, B. So let's see, if I get rid of that third property, does that fix the problem? So does it have to, so basically it's saying it's actually exactly, has to be exactly two properties. So let's see here, let's run. Still missing the following property types A, any, B, any. Although I didn't specify any, do I need to specify a number? Okay, here's my mistake. I need to actually give the object a name. So let's call it param obj. So param object. Okay, so basically what it's saying is that param object is an object with these two properties. So let me add the third back in there. Again, for testing purposes, so three. Actually, we want to make that hello. Safe. And let's see how it responds. Okay, because again, all your properties have to be named. So the object itself is considered a parameter. So you're just describing the shape. So now what it's saying is that type, first number, second number, third, is missing the following properties type. A number, B number, A, B. So then now let's try it with only exactly two properties in the object that are both numbers. And let's see the response. Let's see, is it asking even for a specific, do the names have to be exact? Well, maybe they do. Okay, argument type, first number, second number, is not assignable to parameter type A number. Hmm. 
So I guess the name has to be exact. So let's see if I do this. A B two. That's what the error says. So let's save that. And let's run it again. Okay. Another reason why I like doing these videos. So if you're a dev, I always highly recommend doing videos. Just because kind of running through this experimentation live can help. Cannot find name B. So A, B. Oh, because I didn't define an A or a B. So this technically would be param obj dot A. And this would be param obj dot B. Okay, and I do like the errors are fairly instructive. Like it's it's not hard to figure out what you did wrong with these errors, which makes things nice. And there it goes. It adds one and two. So essentially, you just you can be really specific about what's being passed in to your function. Um, this allows some discipline, so that way when you create your document, so especially if you're creating like libraries for other people to use, you can be really specific to make sure you you enforce best practices. Okay, and that's really nice. But kind of having to type in this whole shape of your parameter every time can be really annoying. What if you have like a certain shape of your parameter, meaning like, you know, is it an object within an object or an object within an array? And are there specific, specific arrays in that, values in that array? You can do that. That's where you use something called an interface. It really allows you to kind of define a particular type. So that way, instead of having to do this whole shape, I can just sit there and say, hey, I have a parameter that's called parameter, and it's gonna be this interface, which knows the whole structure. So let's show you how to make that. So essentially what a interface allows you to do is allows you to define sort of an object shape. Okay, so basically, let's say I would do a do 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 interface. Interface, we'll call it two nums. Okay, and an interface two nums always basically equals an object that has an A, which is a number, and a B, which is a number. So it's always going to look for an object that has these two properties of those two types. Okay? So now I can go back to my function in the parameter where it says param obj. I know I'm saying it's an object, but I can just put in two nums. Because now it's just saying, hey, okay. The definition is in two num, so if I'm going to use that two nums over and over again, I can just do that every time I make a function that does an operation on that two number object. So, and then I can put, a, and I can do anything in this object. I can put a, a, arrays in this object. I can put a function in this object, so I can create like a form of a structure of a function. So you have to pass in a function that looks like this with the exact parameters and return value. You can literally kind of put any kind of structure in this object. Um, cool. So let's see here. Save. Let's make sure this all works. So let's just read through this one more time. Interface two nums. Uh, no. So let's add with two numbers. A, a number, B, number. Let's bring it pass through there. That should all seem good. So let's do it. Okay, so it should return us three. Assuming all the syntax is fine. And it works. Okay, but now if I were to change this to string, we should get an error. because now it's expecting a number and a string. So it's expecting B to be a string and I'm passing through a number. So it's gonna be all upset. Yep, and it's upset. So same thing, argument type A is not assignable to parameter of type two nums. B number argument of, oh yeah, because I said B needs to be a string. So, so basically two numbers cannot be assigned to a number and a string. Cool, okay, so that's, that's, that's interfaces. So interfaces can allow you to define those those shapes of objects that you can pass as parameters. You could also use them in classes. We'll talk more about that later on. But these are kind of the cool things that uh, TypeScript allows you to do and have and available. So, um, and this can really be useful when you're dealing with like objects that you know are constantly sort of in the same shape. They have the same properties with the same names and the same types. Every time your whole library maybe revolves around like, let's say like a request object or a uh, response object that might always have the same shape. These are really useful in that regard. Okay. And I'm pretty sure let's do one last 
test that you can have more than the two properties, but you have to have the two properties of, this, of the right names. So if I did add a property C that equaled hello, okay, which would be good if I, that was a colon. Okay, and then let's turn this back to a number so that way the function runs. I should be fine because even though it has that extra property, it's still an object that has an A property that's a number, a B property that's a number, okay? So let's go down, let's run that code again, do our final test before we move on to the next section of this course. And TypeScript number is three, so it works. Yes. Okay, so I will talk to you guys and see you guys in the next video. Make sure to head over to alexmercedcoder.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my podcast, like me on, uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, like me on Facebook, just, uh, you know, do all the social media. Yay.